This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and things you struggle with most so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts to Flip 50 with the life and energy you love in this second half. And I'm super excited to geek out with a friend of mine, a beautiful friend of mine. She has a face for TV, by the way. It's too bad we're on an audio. (laughs) But my friend, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, is a functional medicine physician specializing in muscle-centric medicine. So I know many of you know already I love her. She leverages evidence-based medicine with emerging cutting-edge science to restore metabolism, balance hormones, and optimize body composition. Can you tell? She's talking our language. (laughs) Dr. Lyon attended the Arizona College of Osteopathic Medicine, and is board certified in family practice. She also completed her research fellowship in nutritional science and geriatrics at Washington University in St. Louis. Prior to her foray into medicine, Dr. Lyon was a national semifinalist in Fitness America, a professional fitness model and nationally ranked figure competitor. Gabrielle, thanks so much for being here. I'm super excited to be on. We have a lot to chat about. We sure do. And let's tell everybody where you are right now, which is kind of exciting, and and what you do there. So I am currently um, at Fort Bragg in North Carolina, just helping some of the guys out, some of the special forces, Navy SEAL guys, with their nutrition, getting them on getting them on track. That's awesome. Yep, and that's awesome. So everybody listening, I think we can feel pretty comfortable. She knows her stuff, right? <laughs> Navy SEALs bring her in. All right. So um, let's talk about this. So I want to jump down to the bottom because as I was looking for how can I give you the best cred and set you up and let everybody know exactly how fabulous you are with an intro on your website, and we'll get to that URL and leave it for you listeners, but you offer a core nutrition reset and it's structured around high quality protein. And you know, that super simple line may be an excellent place for us to both jump in and then we can transition to it again at the end, but let's define it. High quality protein. I know everybody nods their head. They understand that, but do they really, what's, what's your definition I think that that is a really great point when we were talking about protein. So there are different qualities of protein. When an individual thinks about high quality protein, that's defined by the amino acid content. And amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And it's really interesting when you look at the food label, you look at carbohydrates and it has a breakdown of sugar, fiber, um, and total carbohydrates. It has three different things. And then you look at the fat and it has total fat, saturated fat, trans fats. And then when you look at protein, it just says protein. I don't know about you, but doesn't anyone find that weird? It's kind of like the black sheep of the macronutrient family. So what people don't understand and what is coming to light is that it's those amino acids and specifically the branch chains that determine the quality of the protein because they're essential amino acids, meaning that the body can't make it. So what makes a high quality protein? Something that is typically gravity bearing. So that means chicken, turkey, beef, bison, anything that runs or flies. If it swims, it has a little lower quality protein. But essentially, plant animals make the correct quality of protein that drive animals. And plants make the balanced protein that drive plants. So when it comes to a hierarchy of quality of protein, you're talking about gravity-bearing proteins first. And then, of course, there's whey protein um, and egg protein, which are also really good. Great description. All right. So one term in there that I want to make sure that listeners understand, you kind of broke it down. We know essential amino acids, the amino acids are the building blocks of protein, protein, kind of the building block of muscle. What are the branched chain amino acids? So that's leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And typically those are found in animal products. And those are the key for muscle protein synthesis, in particular leucine, which all your listeners, by the time this is over, are going to understand that they need 30 grams minimum of high quality protein per meal to trigger that muscle protein response. Because actually, as you age into your 50s, you get this, some, this thing called anabolic where it becomes really hard for the body to build muscle. 
doesn't just become hard for the body to build muscle, but it also becomes hard for the body to utilize protein. So in order to overcome this, you require the branch chain amino acids, in particular leucine, to overcome that threshold. So that's an example of your branch chain amino acids. And really for the, the point of discussion, those are the most important. Love it. Okay. So very clear. So we're really kind of diving down deep. So we started this with, okay, you read the label, it says protein. All right. We can't just say, all right, then I'm covered. I'm good. We have to go a little bit deeper than that. So what about, you know, you're talking kind of about the chain of command, if you will, you know, runs or flies, it swims, and then there's, you know, animals to animals and plants to plants. What about, and I I say this with total respect to all of you plant eaters out there, but what might we be concerned about for for anybody who is going for a plant-based diet? So plant-based, so first of all, being plant-based is fantastic, right? So it's all about how we define it. The the majority of the diet should be plants, but you can't overlook that and, and not have the optimal amount of protein. So, you know, when you're younger, you can eat more plants and less protein because your body is driven by hormones. So you don't have to worry about this thing called anabolic resistance. But as you age and you're eating more plant and you don't change the ratio of the plants to the protein, then um, notoriously the plant-based proteins have lower branch chain amino acids. So for example, it would require six cups of quinoa to equal one chicken breast to turn on that muscle protein synthesis. For beans or legumes, you're looking at almost two cups and that's, you know, up, the upwards of I don't know, hundreds of calories excess as opposed to um, an 80 calorie, 120 calorie whey protein shake or one chicken less. The caloric load needed to get the correct amino acid is is astronomical. Yeah, so true. And then we also, you look at those both of those things and caloric load, but also fiber, right? I mean, you're going to get full far before you can, you can reach it, even if you wanted to reach it. Yeah. It becomes a big challenge. But you know, yeah. you know when, when we think about aging, the most important thing is to maintain your muscle tissue because muscle is the largest organ in the body. It's actually a secretory organ. And as people age and if they fall and they break their hip, you know, muscle is the reservoir for amino acids. And it's really what is required when the body undergoes stress. So the healthier your muscle tissue is, the healthier the ability to age is, right? It's your metabolic regulator. It's responsible for carbohydrate metabolism. It's responsible for cholesterol metabolism. It's responsible for anti-inflammatory myokines. So maintaining that muscle and then changing what you eat, when you eat it, and how you eat it as you age is really the most essential component to aging well and longevity. And I love that. And it's somewhere in your writing or speaking, I know I've heard you say this, this is my favorite quote from Dr. Gabrielle Lyons, muscle is the organ of longevity. Yeah, it's so true. It's the largest organ in the body. So, all right. So you're talking to women probably who are in their 50s and 60s, and I've got gals out there in their 70s who are showing the way for all of us as well. And, you know, longevity gets more and more important depending on which one of those decades you're in. But I would have to say that if all of us were truthful, the one thing that is still motivating, and this is probably still true of my 91 year old mother is, you know, okay, how we look. (laughs) So talk a little bit about metabolism to us and preventing fat, you know, from accumulating or coming on easier and, and, or maintaining our shape and size. We're still talking about the same thing, aren't we? Yeah, of course. And it's really interesting. Muscle is a metabolic regulator. So it's responsible for body composition. It's responsible for the amount of fat you burn. It's responsible for your metabolism of rest. And what's interesting is if you have healthy muscle, see diabetes and glucose intolerance and Issues that we see later on in the blood, like cardio, you know, that we see high triglycerides, which leads to cardiovascular disease, all of these things actually begin in the muscle years earlier. So it doesn't happen later. It doesn't happen. Um, you don't gain body fat and then you have t- muscle destruction. You actually destroy muscle, then you gain body fat. So diabetes is a disease of the muscle. 
because the glycogen gets full in the muscle and begins to spill over and your muscle can't utilize any more of the substrate or the calories that you're putting in. So if you want to stay lean for your whole life and actually have tight skin and uh, maintain a toned body, you need to manage that muscle tissue first and foremost. Yeah. I can't help thinking right now, as you said that, you know, that's so true, you know, that it really all starts happening in about 30 when we, we should be paying attention, you know, probably in our 20s. So as we record this, and by the time we release it for all of you listeners, it will be beyond Mother's Day, but it will be regularly, it will be fairly fresh. And, you know, I can't help but think about you listeners in the young women in your lives that you have the opportunity to impact and, and encourage them while they're confident, strong women, even though their metabolism may be managed right now by hormones, get them into the weight room, <laughs> get them conscious about high quality protein so that they're developing habits. And when they start flipping 50 and beyond, they're already in a better spot than we were because we did the best we could with the knowledge we have, but now we know so much more. Love that. Okay. So let's go back to uh, breaking down that so simplest of sentences. You know, what is high quality protein? And we really structured that. We hit that on amino acids and breaking it down. Let's talk about high protein just for a minute. So I often think that, you know, high quality protein that kind of gets people stepping back who are, you know, wondering and scrutinizing. And yeah. You listening might be the, you're my prove it to me girls, right? Show me that, show me the science, show me the proof. So we can do that. We can do that. But let's talk about high, you know, when we, you're talking about high and I am, you know, is it really high or is it relative to what people have been doing? So I think it's really important to look at the history of, of the numbers. So the RDA was established in, 19, in the 1940s from World War II uh, extrapolated data. So what they did is they had pig farmers that needed to determine how much protein it would take for pigs to grow. And then they extrapolated that data and then they made it relevant to World War II soldiers so that the soldiers wouldn't lose weight. That was in the 1940s. That recommendation hasn't changed. And how they did it was they collected when they started looking at humans is they chose 18-year-old men and collected their sweat and tried to collect sweat, urine, feces, all of the what would be involved for nitrogen studies and to determine the protein needs. So you can imagine, one, how hard that is. Two, it was based on 18-year-olds. And um, they've now proven that that collection method is, is not accurate. But the interesting part is the recommendations haven't changed. So it's still 0.8 grams per kilogram. And we've yet to update that. So now when people look at protein, the average female eats 58 grams of protein. The data has come out. They've got a protage study. They've got experts in gerontology. You know, I did my fellowship at WashU in geriatrics. And the data is really clear that while 0.8 grams per kilogram is okay to survive when you're in your 20s, as you age, you actually need almost double that. So you're talking about 1.2 up to 2 grams per kilogram to maintain health depending on what you're going through over the age of 40 and as you continue. Okay. To so that breaks down to a minimum of 30 grams per meal, yeah. which is four to five ounces minimum. You know, your, your listeners would do well with four to five ounces three to four times a day. Perfect. For sure. Yeah. And so really in breaking it down, making it very user-friendly, grams per meal, which is so much easier when you're looking at the label with the informed information we now have about amino acids and quality protein, but you're looking at labels and, or, you know, about four to six ounces, your, your palm and your first knuckle is about that. How many grams per meal? So it should be a minimum of 30. If you're over 50, yep. it should be a minimum of 30. Love it. You need about 40 grams. Okay. Truth but if you're training, the interesting part is if you're working out, yeah. then you need then you can get away with 30 if you consume protein right after you work out. Great. And if you are more sedentary, what happens to your need then? 
Sorry. You, sorry. You broke up. What was that? I broke up. Yeah. If you're more sedentary, you're not training, you're less active, whether because of your situation or you're, you're just simply haven't bonded with exercise yet. <laughs> Do you need more protein? So that's a good question. I would stick with the 30 to 40 grams, probably closer to 35. And it becomes really important as you age to get this number right. It's um, way more essential as you age to get the number right than it is when you're younger. So glad you said that. Okay. Love that. All right. So now we've got a user-friendly way to figure out our protein needs. We're a little bit more aware of where it needs to come from to be quote unquote high quality Let's, let's talk about, so I love, you know, kind of diving back into, I've got a lot of women here who are, all right, I'm plant-based, you know, I really want to be totally plant-based. Can someone be on a plant-based diet entirely bringing in their proteins from that? And what would you recommend? I mean, is there a way that they can supplement and balance that? What are your thoughts on that? So my first question is, why do they want to be just plant-based? Great question. Yeah. I mean, so we know that there's all kinds of nutrients um, that are in an omnivorous diet. So why would an individual skew one way or the other? I mean, there's never been a vegan culture in all of history, except for humans over the last hundred years. It's never existed. So just from a health standpoint, um, you know, my first question is why? And then my second question is, yes, can it be done? Yes, but you would need to make sure that you're supplementing with branched chain amino acids with your lower quality meals. Got it. So at every meal, mm -hmm. you would you would want to take that religiously, just like you would be sitting down to your four to six ounces of, of an animal protein. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You know, and the more active you are, the, the less protein you can get away with less because you stimulate your muscle two ways. Number one, through exercise and two, through diet. Yep. So um, if you're training a lot, then you obviously want enough for protein turnover, but you know, you don't necessarily need to eat four meals a day with six ounces. You could do three meals with 35 and probably be pretty good. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely based on the individual. Yeah. But it's really key. Um, everyone should be, all your listeners should be having 35 grams three times a day. It will change the body composition. Okay. And I, by the words, can you say that again? Yeah. It will change, it will change their body composition. Yeah. Um, and it will keep their metabolism and their blood sugar regulated. And I just want to mention that collagen protein does not stimulate muscle protein synthesis, but is very good for hair, skin, and nails at, you know, higher doses, but it doesn't count towards quality protein. When I think about protein, I think about what's going to feed the muscle and what's going to trigger the metabolism and what's going to make your body composition the best. Great point. I'm so glad you made that. So collagen protein is kind of a great additional supplement, but these are two separate goals that you're targeting with branch chain amino acid, rich protein and collagen. So listeners, that was a great distinction. So I'm hoping you got that. So I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate for those women who are listening, who, who have this concern, because I know this is a question somebody would ask, you know, what about, you know, too high protein? What about kidney damage? What about issues with that? Do you have concerns? So that's a, uh, another great question. Data shows that if an individual has healthy kidneys, it actually improves kidney function. And bone is actually made from protein. So in the data, as well as in my own fellowship, those that ate a higher protein diet actually had better bone density because again, protein is made from bone. And, and when you think about acid, you know, the acid alkaline story, it's not that protein is acidic. It's that vegetables are very basic and alkaline. And so it's really great to have a lot of plants. Right. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to overdo protein. No one's ever on diabetes from too much protein. And that was such a great statement. Never have. You know? So it's yeah. just about really looking at the, it's, you know, protein is a very emotional topic for people because it has a face, right? So no one argues that packaged food is bad for you and carbohydrates are bad. And no one argues that you need some bad, but too much is going to make you bad. But everybody argues about protein, just about everybody. It's a very emotional topic for people. Why is that? Because it has a face. Ah. It's a very, it's the only macronutrient that is incredibly emotional. Interesting. For people. But it really skews 
individual's capacity to look at the science and the data. That's not to say that eating based on emotion isn't important, right? I wouldn't want to force feed a vegetarian or vegan a burger, but I would want to educate them on how to manage that and how to do it well and how to do it correctly and also um, how to do it wisely because the decisions they make now and the decisions that they make in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s really impact the trajectory of how they age in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. So important because I think you just, that's another great target point. We're talking about both now and later. I mean, this is the, this is the two for one that you've been waiting for, seriously. So it is both your metabolism bump for the, you know, staving off the belly fat, looking better right now as you age and staying strong and vibrant so that, you know, 30 years from now, you are still doing the things you love to do with the people you love to do them with. You know, I think as we talk about longevity, we brought that word up at the beginning. I think it's so important to talk about, we don't just want to live longer. You know, we want to live better for longer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. I agree. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really important. And actually, you're very much a pioneer. Nobody is talking about training as you mature. And it's really the key. The cardio equipment and all of that stuff is great. But when you really talk about longevity, and you really want to talk about health, it is all about muscle. So you're doing a fantastic job spreading the word and, and really are at the forefront of doing what is absolutely necessary for aging. Well, thank you. No pressure. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're just doing such a great job. It's super, it's very important. It's vital. And it's the most important. Uh, great. Gabrielle, thanks. And I think it is so important. And I, I want to talk about this with you kind of, and this may be on a more personal basis. So listeners, this inevitably happens when I have a great guest on. So um, Gabrielle and I knew we were going into protein. She doesn't know I was going to this place I'm going to next. So, so it is fair game for her to say, heck no, we're not going there. But I also want to call out the elephant is in the room. So I'm hearing a little background noise and a little clicking. So listeners, if you're getting that too, I just uh, want to thank you for hanging in there. This this episode, I think this interview is so important that I just want to roll with it. I know Gabrielle is doing important work there. So if you can tolerate a little, you know, less than stellar um, audio, I hope you'll hang in here with us because it's so worth it. But Gabrielle, let's talk about like strength training, given your background and you know, I love kind of peeking into your life here. You're talking about protein, about aging well, and you have this history yourself of, you know, being a competitor and a strong woman competitor, which is so important. Talk about inner strength that comes from strength training and from from feeding your body and fueling it right. You know, both now where you are, you're not quite legal to be on flipping 50, but yeah. you know, we invited her anyway, right? We really like her, <laughs> but so, you know, for those yeah. people listening who are and, and who want to grow strong later, I mean, talk a little bit about that. Cause we don't talk about that enough. And I think that is so important. I think that it's all about leading into the resistance, all of it, whether it's physical resistance you know, emotional resistance, anything in your life. It's about having a mindset that is growth-based as opposed to being afraid, right? So it's about embracing the stress. We have this concept that stress is bad and challenge is bad and change is bad and that it's so much and it's all of these things. But my internal perspective is that it is an opportunity to practice resilience. So every time I don't want to train or every time... I'm tired, you know, I'm building my own business. I'm, you know, did two residencies in a fellowship. It was all about embracing that challenge. And even if I didn't want to do something, again, it's an opportunity to build resiliency, internal resiliency, because it puts you to the test, right? If everything were easy and you were never tested, then you never had the opportunity to show your skills. And that goes with everything. Yeah, I love that. I I love... You know, I think for listeners, the, you know, putting it to the test and, 
<laughs> such a great quote, leaning into resistance with an analogy that goes so many places. And for women here, you know, I think some of the resistance that you may have about resistance or strength training may come from it's unfamiliar. You haven't done it earlier in your life. You know, we didn't have the the impetus or the encouragement when we were in our 20s or 30s or 40s potentially to do the weightlifting. And we had lots of distractions, you know, in other ways of being told we should be. So it may be that you're walking into the weight room for the first time at 55 or 65. And that may be resistance that you have to address. But, you know, it, it, all of those things, like the tough things that you've gone through make you ultimately stronger. So, you know, I think, um, we all look at starting exercise. So many of us for, you know, let's get off the couch because we want to look better. That so often is our motivation. And I'm not throwing that motive under the bus because I love all the things that come with it. It doesn't matter to me what's your motivation. The good things, you know, are side effects and bonuses of it come with it. But um, I think it's so important that we address that and having Dr. Lyons, such a strong and beautiful, you know, female role model who's in medicine, you know, starting to lead the way and break out of the barrier of, you know, what traditional medicine was. I love what you're doing. Thank you. You know, it is, it's really about reinterpreting the experience. You know, I don't want your listeners to, they can be uncomfortable going into the gym to train for the first time, but have that be exciting. Don't have it be a major stressor that they have to push through, but reinterpret the experience of, oh man, I have never done this in my life. I don't know what I'm doing. I cannot wait to overcome this challenge. Love it. Great information. Okay. Toughest question of the day is, is there a question that you wish I would have asked you? Anything we didn't hit? I really think that you covered it all. I mean, we talked about getting the right quality protein. Okay. Whoops. I got a little breakup right there, but I think we got that. So we nailed it. And I want to make sure we point everybody to the potential to work with you on a level about core nutrition and you've got a reset for them. The best place to get that is where? My website, drgabriellelyon.com. And per, can, yep, and they can find me on Instagram with the same handle, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Facebook too, yeah. And she's got beautiful posts. Yeah, I love it. So those links I will put in the show notes. If you happen to be lifting weights right now, or you're walking, or you're commuting, don't stop. They'll all be there. And I'm going to make some great notes from. We got great nuggets. It, this was a, a short, but yet. So, so much information coming your way. I'm going to break it down and give you the review. So you've got that amino acids, the protein content, the essential or branch chain amino acids, and you understand what they are and where to find them. Thanks so much listeners for being here. And Dr. Gabrielle, thanks for being here. Thanks so much. Listeners, if you've got a question we didn't ask, leave it below the show link at flipping50.com and join us on the Flipping 50 TV Facebook page to get all the juicy resources and links that we mentioned today in the shows and special notes I'm going to give you. Visit the show notes at flipping50.com forward slash podcast. And if you enjoy the show, I'd so appreciate that you leave a rating in iTunes and then share this with a friend to surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Start Flipping 50 today.